So I'm with a friend, uh, some friend, great friends, Chris and Stephanie Overstreet, just hanging out in Michigan. We were walking back towards the car, which is parked in a multi-level car park. Uh, I just see this guy across the road, this African-American guy, and I just sensed to just yell out to him. I said, hey man, has anyone told you that Jesus loves you? I just yelled that out pretty loud, and he turns around, he kind of looks at me strange, and, and then after that, he just continues to walk, and I felt the Lord just say straight away, well, go get him. And so I was like, all right. I just started telling this guy, I said, hey, I've got a word from God for you. And as I said that, I'm like, well, no, I don't. But I knew God would probably drop something into me, you know. And I said, hey, uh, I just sense that you've moved into a house that's been really kind of hard for you and critical for you. And the people that you're living with right now, um, two of them are dealing drugs and, and they're drug dealers and they're involved in some really bad stuff. And, and you actually just recently started a new job in the cleaning business. And you haven't talked to your mom in like three months and she lives over the other side of America. And God's telling you right now, he wants you to reconcile with your mother, reconcile with him. And, uh, and God can change you and he can give your life back, you know? And this guy kind of looked at me and he was getting rocked and, and Chris and I began to sort of put our hands on his shoulders and, and pray and it was awesome. And then straight after that, he walks off and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. You know, I, I just gave him an awesome word and straight away he walked away. And then I felt the Lord again prompt me. He's like, well, go get him again. So I was like, yes, sir. yes, Lord, you know? I go up to him the second time with Chris and say, hey man, I just feel God really wants to touch you deeply. He loves you so much. And he revealed all that stuff to me on the spot for you because he wants you, he's calling you back. But we had our hands on his shoulders again. I said, I wanna pray for you. Is that okay? And he's like, yes, you can pray. And he was a little bit drunk, you know, he's kinda, he's kinda slurring a little bit and he was sort of stumbling back and forth. But I could sense the brokenness in him, the hunger in him for God. And so I just crunched my fist up into a little ball and I pushed it towards his chest. I said, Lord, would you just touch him? And as I touched him, we had our hands on him. He just goes, bam, and he hits the deck and fell on the ground. It's out in the middle of the street near all the restaurants and stuff. And, and so it was kind of crazy. So uh, Chris and I, we, we jumped on him, man, like seagulls on fish and chips. Like we just jumped on top of him and begin to pray and begin to bind the spirits in his life. And it was the weirdest thing. He gets up and you know, he's really freaked out now and he's more, way more sober. And he's really freaking out. And so is Chris and I, we're like, wow, this is awesome. We're just heading back to the car. And, uh, and so he gets up and, and then he, anyway, grabs my face. He's, he starts grabbing my face. He goes, are you an angel? I said, no, I'm definitely not an angel. I'm from Australia. I said, no, I, I just felt compelled to come and tell you that Jesus loves you so much. And that he's got a great plan for your life and he wants to change you. And the encounter took place after just the simplest of obedience, you know. He gave his heart to the Lord right there. It was, it was amazing. And he was just, he started to weep, started crying and stuff. It was incredible, but what happened next actually demonstrated to me um, more than the whole encounter, the heart of God and the heart of people searching for God. So Chris and I and, and Stephanie and our friends, we all went back to the car and uh, we walked up this multi-level car park stairs and all of a sudden we hear this thumping, bam, 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 bam. You know, this guy's just banged on the window a couple of stories down. So we looked down and it was the same guy and he chased us back. And so we went downstairs, we're like, hey man, what's up? And he goes, please don't leave me. He said, please don't leave. I don't have anybody like you in my life. And it just broke me, man. And, and I said, oh, well, we live in Reading and he, we're in Michigan. I, I said, I can't stay here with you. I said, but you can get my number and, and we can stay in touch and all that kind of thing. I said, but God will be with you. The Holy Spirit will stay with you. But it just deeply, radically impacted me because the world is hungry. <laughs> just because we don't see it on the TV, it doesn't mean they're not hungry. This man, when I first met him, he was drunk, contorted, confused, you know, and he tried to walk away from me twice. And I just learned so deeply that day that as he came back, I felt like one of the disciples of Jesus, you know, having followers saying, please let me come, come with you. But I learned that day that the world is actually super hungry and they're waiting for someone like us. We have the answer. We have Jesus. I just want to declare over you uh, who's watching this testimony that they're, they're hungry for you. They're waiting for you. And the world is waiting for, for them to see the real Jesus come out of you. The world is waiting to see the real Jesus come out of you. And they're hungrier, more hungry than you think. So go get them. <laughs>